Hey everybody, my name is Ty Cook and I am a sixth and seventh grade middle school science teacher. I teach seventh grade life science and sixth grade earth science. And this is my 11th year in the classroom teaching middle school and my sixth year sharing all about my classroom journey here on social media. And people often ask, what is my favorite thing about teaching? And 100% it's my students and the relationships and community we've built in the classroom and I love being able to teach middle schoolers because they're so eager and energetic and fun and they have the best creative minds. But I also love teaching science because it's so hands-on. We're teaching critical thinking and we're also answering real world questions and students get so engaged and interested, which makes teaching science a blast. Today, I wanna to answer y'all's questions that you asked here on social media. And the first one is from NT Kids Outside, which says, how do you manage materials and preps for so many classes? And this is an excellent question and something that I still in my 11th year teaching struggle with because we have a lot of labs to plan for, especially in science and when you teach multiple preps. So I'm teaching earth and life science. I used to also teach physical science and the struggle is real. One of the things that I think is the best thing is to, at the beginning of the school year, look at your curriculum map, look at your pacing guide, and try to see where you can incorporate labs and get those planned out as far in advance as you can. Because when you have those planned out in the future, you're gonna be able to go ahead and purchase the materials, possibly ask for donations, create a GoFundMe. You could send home that list with your parents on the first week of school and you'd be shocked at how many supplies you can get donated which helps lower the cost which is a big deal but also make sure that you have all those materials when you're ready to teach that lab the second thing is i have a different cabinet where i organize all of the labs and supplies for each grade level in different prep and i try to organize them by beginning of the year chronologically all the way to the end of the school year and organization is key when it's coming to knowing where all of your materials are because we know it can be chaotic in a classroom and you want to know exactly where to go and grab your supplies. So organization is key in managing that as well. Our second question is, how often do you relate your curriculum to real world application? I feel like classes are most successful when they inspire students to use the information out in the world. I could not agree with you more. I think when we're able to pull in real world events, not only are we able to expand our students' knowledge, keep them up to date on things going on in the world, but we're also gonna get them more engaged in our lessons. One of the things I love about earth science is real world events are happening all the time. You know, whether it be natural disasters, new developments in outer space. We do an activity when we're covering weather and climate where I have my students pick a city that they want to research and they become a weather forecaster and they're looking at real information and creating a weather forecast and they get so invested and engaged but also they're learning and they get student choice and all of those things combined are incredible. So pull in the real world events whenever you can because it certainly has a dramatic impact on your students' engagement and how that lesson is gonna go. Our next question comes from Curious and Wise and they ask, how do you inspire students to be curious about physics? My first year teaching physical science, I was very intimidated to teach it because I was the least familiar with that curriculum and the standards. But I actually found by the end of the school year that it was the one where I felt like students were the most curious and engaged. And the reason why is it lends itself to so many hands-on investigations, labs, where we're getting students to think about real world problems and challenges and they have to seek solutions. And I remember we did lots of things, but two of the ones that come to mind is when we were learning about speed, acceleration, velocity, we created trash cars, which they brought trash and recycled materials in from home. And they were building and constructing a car that we raced in the hallways and the accelerator was a balloon. And they were so engaged in this because they were trying to figure out how they were gonna beat the other people in their class and how they could improve the design and model of their car. Also, we did STEM roller coasters where when we were learning about potential and kinetic energy, they had to construct their own stem roller coaster using construction paper 
and we had all of these rules like the height and that it had to have loops that their marble would be able to run through and students were so engaged in figuring out how they were going to construct it in a way that it met all of those demands in the assignment but hands-on student-centered projects, labs, investigations, those are the way that we really get our students to be curious and inspire them to want to learn about our subjects. Our next question is from Little Humans Big Learning, and they ask, what are some ways to integrate STEM for early childhood educators? My best friend is a third grade teacher, and one of the things that she says a lot is they don't have a lot of time for science and STEM during their school day and it's not prioritized as much because you guys have so many things to teach and so many preps. One of the suggestions I would have is that STEM, STEM challenges can be a great community builder and morning meetings or that time that you dedicate for building your classroom community is a great time to pull out a STEM challenge because you're gonna get kids thinking critically. They are so engaged and invested but also they're working together on a team to try to solve these problems. So it's a great way to incorporate it. I also have done some STEM challenges where we crossed over with our math teacher and we took the STEM challenge to the next level by incorporating math into it. We were doing a tower building challenge in science and I remember the math teacher created the math portion of it where students had to budget out their STEM tower. So not only was it the tallest freestanding tower, but they had to make choices and all of those choices were part of their budget. They had supply costs and she created a math integration. So you can really find some clever ways to integrate into math or even into ELA and pull it from a story that you're reading and find those cross-curricular connections where you can feel like I can bring that STEM challenge in to this other lesson. So those are just a couple of ways I think you could bring them into your classroom. Jill Campbell asks, how do you adapt to the ever-changing needs of your classroom? And that is a very complicated and difficult question. But the first thing that I would say is that as a teacher, we are constantly having standards change. Our students' needs are changing each school year, each class period, even from month to month, but also, some of the methods that we're using to reach our students are changing. So I think that every teacher has to be committed to being a lifelong learner. And if the things that we've done in the past aren't working for our students now, we have to be open to looking for other ways, whether it be through your PLC, on social media, but being open to new ideas, testing them out and seeing how we can meet and adapt to the needs of our students. Because we know in the real world that it's changing. There are new jobs, there's new challenges, and we as teachers are preparing our students for those future careers. And we have to be able to be adapting along with them. And that means employing some new methods and trying out new ways to make sure that they're engaged and that they're learning. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for all the great questions that you guys asked. And of course, these are just my teacher opinions. So take it with a grain of salt because obviously you know best in your classroom with your students and you're the expert. But I had fun chatting with you guys and I hope y'all had a great time. And until next time, happy teaching and I'll see you in the classroom.